All right, guys, welcome to our very first Review Our Review. Uh, it's a new segment Sam and I are going to do every exciting. week. exciting. Uh, we're going to try to release them every Thursday is the day that we're going to, you know, try to get them released on. Um, obviously, we're going to try and have a set time. We're always going to be at YouTube's mercy uh, as far as uploading goes, but we figured this was going to be a nice way to not only poke fun at ourselves a little bit, uh, interact with you guys on a little bit uh, in a little bit better basis because we can't see the comments coming, you know, across when we do a live show. We really want it to be more interactive. Yeah, and I think this is a fun way to, to kind of engage a deeper conversation than what we would normally just give you in in the form of a review show. Um, so everybody that commented, thank you. Typically what we'll do on these, um, and well, I guess before we get into this, let me plug some stuff first. Uh, WrestlingRumors.net, please, for all your wrestling needs. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wrestling Rumors Net. Like us on Facebook. Uh, we are on Facebook. We're really starting to promote the Facebook page now, guys. Um, you're going to see a lot of our videos coming up right on the feed there. You're going to see all of our articles coming up. Uh, so go check out Facebook, too, with us now, please. So... Follow Sam on Twitter at LadyNexus13. Of course. Um, the first lady of WrestlingRumors.net. Uh, follow me at AdamDaily13. Um, now, guys, what, what we're going to normally do is pick about five or so questions, maybe, you know, make it somewhat of a shorter segment. But this week, because it's the first time, um, and I, I'm not going to lie, I had a lot of fun with a lot of these comments. Um, we're going to, we're just, basically, if you send us a comment this week, we're running with it. So thank you guys for participating. Uh, it means a hell of a lot to us. Uh, and hopefully you guys have as much fun with this as we're going to. So And I haven't seen them, so he's kind of just yes. giving them to me on the yes. fly. You're going to so see it's gonna be, some... It's going to be a little fun. I'm excited. All right, so first thing, uh, we had a, a, a question coming from Tim. Okay. Uh, Tim, shout out, brother. I love the New Orleans helmet on there, by the way. Um, even though I am a Raider fan, I still have respect for New Orleans and love the city down there. Um, he said, Sam, I'm going to get your opinion first, and I have a take on this as well. Um, he thought that the fans from Monday night were disrespectful for saying thank you for an injury uh, when the fans were chanting thank you, Rollins, uh, towards John Cena. Uh, Sam, what do you think about that? I mean, I guess it's kind of disrespectful, but I loved it. <laughs> the crowd was being a heel. I loved it. I, you know what? I, I think that typically, ugh, this is where it gets it, it gets very ticky tacky because I I truly believe in this instance I I I will respectfully disagree only because think about it this way. Rollins came out in a shirt, uh, basically throwing, immediately throwing shade on John Cena for the broken yeah. nose. Um, they're marketing around this. They're making sure that no matter where Seth Rollins goes, appearances on a Daily Show, they're making sure that they that mm -hmm. they mention he's the man that broke John Cena's nose. Um, yeah. This is uh, to me. This is. I think this was done in a smart way. I think WWE expected this. Mm -hmm. They knew that, or else they wouldn't have made the shirts. Um, which I think it, they were hysterical shirts. Um, as far as the fans go, I think even John Cena, and I don't, obviously don't know John Cena, don't want to speak for the man, but I think in a way he might have been let down if the fans weren't, you know, if part, because Cena is so polarizing, if all of a sudden now everybody's pro Cena because of the injury, we kind of feel bad, and not to make light of any injury, guys, but it was yes. a broken nose. Um, it, it, if it was like Tyson Kidd's injury with a broken neck, uh, that is that a much been different very story. Disrespectful, a much yes. different story. Um, you know, and this is stuff that they've done in the past, guys. There's been injuries before where crowd chants have started, and um, they've played into it. They look for this. The Owen 316 shirt. Uh, I just, you know, I just broke your neck. Uh, I think that you know, when he, whenever he broke Austin's <laughs> neck, um, they've they've always kind of played into it. And knowing how much that they were marketing around it, mm -hmm. I think they knew they were going to get that crowd response. And I think it was more. Not a lack of respect. I think it was the fans playing right in the WWE's hands. I can see I that. really do. I really, truly, in my heart of hearts, believe that WWE mm -hmm. knew that there was going to be a fan base that was going to pop for Rollins, and mm -hmm. especially for how much, I mean, this has been, that you know, they've shown it so many times, so many different angles, and that's why I think that in this case, now, I do agree with you, though. Typically, I wouldn't be okay mm -hmm. with people, you know, saying thank you for, for depending on the injury. And I, I think that's where it depends on the injury. So I absolutely see your argument on that, though. Um, because I, I think if it was something something severe, something something that would shelf him for, although we've seen it before. I mean, we've seen other guys get shelved for like eight, ten months. And, uh, you know, Randy Orton put Cena out before when Orton and Cena was, I mean, that was the big feud, like the, yeah. the late, uh, you know, I think it was like around 07, 08, 09, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Fan response was the same, um, and it was really not even an injury; it was a slip up. I, I think they expect it, um, but I do think the the fans, at least I would hope, I would hope coming from a fan, I would hope that we would have enough sense that you know, knowing it was, and I don't want to say just a broken nose, guys, because you know it's it, it is a broken nose, but um, if it was a lot more severe, like if people were doing yeah. this with Tyson Kidd, 
it, it would be de- to me it would be absolutely deplorable mm-hmm. if it was a joke like draws his injury um if this was I, I mean I hate to say it but it's something with Owen you know mm-hmm. I, I that, that would be to me uh, absolutely disgusting you know something like this where you know they already had a short on the website released before Raw went on the air <laughs> They were egging fans on. Yeah, so they're, that's, they're I think shirts, that's making fun of the fact that he got injured. So I don't really think it's that disrespectful. And and I honestly personally. think I, I truly believe that Cena is absolutely getting off on it. I think that he's loving the fact because I do think that we we don't give Cena enough credit, at least in his later years. I think there was a time that maybe he was and let me get your opinion, that he was maybe more ego ish we can say to me it doesn't it seems less about his ego now and it seems more that wwe wants to keep pushing him Mm -hmm. where i i think personally think that cena might be ready to hand that torch over yeah i've also got that feeling as well that he's almost ready to leave not really necessarily even leave but be less in the spotlight like you said yeah and he's not taking himself as serious anymore too Mm -hmm. and i think that to me is why if i was john cena honestly my nose got broken that manner I would have been sitting at home or backstage. I mean, he could have been backstage probably now, but wherever John Cena was at, I would have been sitting there with the biggest smile on my face because that's when you know if you want to be the most polarizing guy, if you want to be the guy to get that crowd response. And, you know, in a smart city, it's mm-hmm. I, I think there's a part of Cena that loves that too. So um, I, And it's not like he's going to be gone for very long. But I mean, it is a really John valid Cena, point, though. It is, there, we shouldn't mock injuries. And I think if this was a, a more severe injury, I, I do think that – we would have to pick and choose when we're going to do something like this, guys. Because yeah. I do think, but and that's a great point, Tim, that you bring up. It is a fantastic point. Mm-hmm. But I think in this situation, I think that they want us. They they want us as fans to do it. Um, I think Cena wants it. It plays into the storyline so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really, it could, this is another way to keep Cena off TV even more because they could just keep running with Seth Rollins and just running his mouth. Just yeah. running his mouth, you know? Yeah. Um, David. Big shout out to David Man uh, Manuel. Seth is amazing. Seth Rollins again. Seth Rollins has been killing it on promos. Mm-hmm. His promos have been, and I, I, I truly believe that I, I think that a lot of fans are waiting for Seth Rollins to get flipped face. I, I don't know. So what do you, What do you think about that? I'm not waiting for him. To, well, we all know that he's going to get flipped face eventually. I'm just dreading that day. The, the, well, the casual fan, yeah. though, don't you feel like there's this? There, you, you can almost sense it with the casual fan or the or the the younger fan base that they kind of want Rollins. No, because they want to cheer for Rollins. They want to cheer for. They Rollins. want to cheer for Rollins, I, I, but they right, can't because correct. he's a heel. And correct. correct. New fans and kids tend to stay with that within those borderlines. They hate the heels and they love the baby faces. Whereas we as adults can like anybody that we want. Um. Let's see what else we got here. Digestive ceremony, which I love. By the way, it was the it was, it was a great name. Um. I love this one too, Sam. Uh, Sam has the butterfly title hovering in midair inside an invisible cage. That is what she spoke about, by the way, on Raw Review, uh, and that's good LSD booking. And I will say, that would be amazing LSD booking. I, actually. you know, I think. Listen, I went Sam. through some college years. I was straight edge for a good twenty-one years, and then I kind of just went, "Hey, I'm in college now. What am I doing? Maybe I may." That, and trust me. Under LSD rules, it would be a fantastic match. Just mm-hmm. a, a hovering, magical, like... Butterfly. The, the only way to get it would be like Super Mario Brothers. You just jump up and have to hit, <laughs> hopefully you hit your head. They have a trample, a spirit squad <laughs> trampoline in the ring that you would have to jump off of and bounce the title off of your head to get the win. Like in, like in Mario Brothers? Yes. That's, that's to nice. me, that's the way you book... The way that you pitch that match, that's, in my opinion, how you would have to get, the, how you'd have to get it down. That's get, awesome. get out the old sp- spirit squad trampoline and just go from there. And I would say that is A-plus booking if I was on LSD, by the way. <laughs> that would be amazing booking if I was able to do that while on drugs. Just saying. Um, now, but, it's a great idea. But getting with that, though, if I can get back to the comments here, guys. Um, getting back to that, though, um, well, we'll get we'll get back to the to the butterfly title because that is – thank you. That was so I, – I was laughing. Um, but uh, Claudio, uh, Claudio and Steen, a.k.a. Cesaro, uh, Cesaro and Kevin Owens, they have fought before. Uh, they have fought in Ring of Honor before. Uh, and they have yes. fought. Um, he gives a really good one, too. Uh, they had a singles match in 2009 for C4 Wrestling. Steen and Generico also face uh, Castanoli and Nigel McGuinness at Ring of H Tag Wars 2008. Um, Claudio Castanoli was uh, Cesaro's old name. Uh, you guys obviously know we're not going to insult your intelligence, but in case you didn't know, El Generico was Sami Zayn. Um, so a lot of Ring of Honor talent, man. That's the one thing I'll say is TNA might... 
make names or they might have names, but Ring of Honor breeds champions. Yes, they, they, they do. They've bred the future of the WWE. Really, yeah, all, really the, all the big names that they have right now have mm-hmm. come out of Ring of Honor. Uh, and he also says that, um, I shouldn't say he, he or she, but uh, who knows, it's a, it's a great name. Regardless, it's, it's a digestive ceremony is great to me. Um, I, and he, they say, I see a Texas Tornado match at SummerSlam as far as the tag team titles go. Uh, if it was just going to be New Day versus PTP, there'd be no reason to involve the Ascension, Lucha Dragons, and Los Matadores the way they have. So we're probably going to get some kind of multi-tag team style match, which I'm going to tie into another uh, comment. Um, Rowdy Rough Ray said that the Brooklyn title, and and although this was before they announced it, so we're not going to hold this against you. Rowdy Rough Ray said, I think the NXT Brooklyn uh, will and should have a multi-tag team title match, so I don't think they'll have another one at SummerSlam. We now know, though, that uh, Blake and Murphy are facing the VOD villains at NXT, and that came after the comment was left, so that's absolutely not mm-hmm. a fault on yours. So we do know that there is a, a capability for a multi-tag team match, um, a, you know, a Texas Tornado style match or something to that effect. With the rumors circulating that we might see the debut of Enzo and Big Cass, could we see, you know, some sort of um, uh, sick, you know, you know, maybe six team battle royal kind of Texas tornado, some sort of elimination style match for the tag team title match? I mean, whether it's four teams, six teams, um, it, you know, you do bring up a fantastic point. They wouldn't be involving these other tag teams uh, with the focus primarily being on PTP and commentary. It seems like. Uh, while all the other tag team actions going on, mm-hmm. do you think that there's any there's there's any legitimacy to the rumors that we're going to see Big Cass and, and and Big Cass and Enzo come up at either SummerSlam or the night after? And if they do come up at SummerSlam, would that make sense to put them into a, a multi team match? If they're going to have some big ta- special tag match for SummerSlam, I can definitely see them bringing them up for this. It's, because it's in Brooklyn. Right, right. That their, yes. their gimmicks yes. would get so over yes. in that town. It would just, it would be stupid not to bring them up then. And the fact that they're not actually fighting for the, the NXT tag titles makes me wonder then what are they going to do with them? They have to and be bringing them They've up. been somewhat absent recently. And I think that's, that. I that those are the rumors. And we don't, you know, guys, we don't know for sure. Obviously, mm-hmm. we're not on the, on the creative team, but... Uh, there's been speculation they're gonna they're gonna premiere or they're gonna make their debut. So you know, I guess we'll you know we'll see. I just feel like that would be a missed opportunity if they didn't call them up for SummerSlam. I think it's the perfect city for it. Mm-hmm. I, I really do, and I think that their gimmick it would be a launching pad for their gimmick to get mm-hmm. over. It, it, it's an old FBI, you know. It really yeah. reminds me of the old full blooded Italians, and with them for what, to debut on Brooklyn could do an immense, mm-hmm. immense uh, favor to their character and to the careers of, of mm-hmm. Enzo and Big Cass. So. Um, KO310 KO I'm oh, sorry uh, KO310 said Purple is associated with gravity We were asking why Neville wears purple Purple is associated with there gravity you I, You know what The nerd in me Is actually very pissed off At myself for not knowing that I was never really good at science I know I am I am very upset with that uh, About that So thank you for that And now we know And you know what I know a lot of people Were probably like Well why do you guys even care What's the difference I'm an attire guy. I like to know little things like that. I am. I am a ring attire guy. I like to yeah. know the ins and outs. I'm big in the color schemes, mm-hmm. and um, and it all makes sense now. So thank you very much. He um, likes to be an encyclopedia, so he loves. No, it, it's, and that's why I love doing something like this, guys, because it gives us an opportunity to just as fans to all interact a little bit more, you know. Mm-hmm. So I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as we're having fun with this right now. Uh, Marcus, my man, brother, what's going on? Uh, Charlotte, he's saying that Charlotte should beat Nikki for the Divas Championship, and then uh, the day she ties AJ Lee's reign, and then the next night uh, the women's title was brought back. Um, That's part one. And then part two, do you think we could see a possible heel turn for either Reigns or Ambrose at SummerSlam? Um, So Marcus thinks that Charlotte should beat Nikki for the Divas Championship the day she ties AJ Lee's reign. TV taping might make that hard. I don't know when the TV yeah, taping on that is. Um, maybe it's the to raw time after. That perfectly. I don't know if that would even. And I, I had the day worked out perfectly. Yeah, timing on that, but I don't think it's. It, she's breaking the record. I, I think it's just, um, guys. She just like we're gonna have to accept that John Cena is winning the WWE Championship more than you know. Um, she's breaking the record. Yeah. She, she is. Uh, I, agree I, I just. That. In my heart of hearts right now, it's, no, it's I'll be shocked. I'll say that. You know, I don't think that she should be AJ's record. 
But I think it's going to happen. So. And I agree, but I could play devil's advocate right now so bad. I'm not going to. We'll save that for a completely different segment. I think she's going to beat her by like a day or something. It's going to be something ridiculous, like a day or two, and then she's going to get the title. Taken um, off Drake said that uh, Paul Heyman is so. And this, I, I will. Drake, I laughed so hard when I read this, and this is why that I didn't. I kept certain quotes from her. Uh, Drake said Paul Heyman is so amazing on the mic that he can literally make you get excited to get a to get a colonoscopy. Oh, <laughs> oh. And it's true. It's so true. And, and I'm, and you know, and well, I apologize, no, I guys. Just, I imagined Paul Heyman in a doctor's office, like behind some dude with his ass up and some doctor sticking something up his ass, like just like the ass and Paul Heyman in the background. Like I didn't need that image in my head. And Brandon, thank you Ugh. very much for your kind words too. And you know what? And, and I agree. And that's like the the, the hysterical foibles of our show. Again. Is that of course we would cut out during like when we were going to talk about the most important segment, Lesnar and you know uh, Lesnar and Heyman. Uh, that's like when our audio, our video cut out. Basically, guys, what all I wanted to talk about was Paul Heyman basically could sell anything to anybody. We had a, one of our friends over that's a casual fan. He's he's getting back into wrestling. We talked about it. Paul Heyman has this man believing that this match is absolutely bigger than SummerSlam. Yeah. So when he, I mean, I when he, Heyman was done with this promo, if we would have said, "Dude, I need you to run through this wall." He would have got put a juggernaut helmet on like an X Men and just I mean my man was so like just fired up. Heyman had him on in the edge of his seat, and I think that's something that we we really have to embrace while we still have Paul Heyman in the wrestling capacity. Is that this man is gold? I mean it's more than gold, and we we I can only use the same the same monikers and the same epitaphs every single time. I mean this man is just so brilliant. I love that Brock Lesnar was standing on the pedestal, and again when you can make Brock Lesnar crack. You know, um, and it was, and thank you also to, um, shout out to, uh, Digestive Ceremony again. It's, it was, uh, he was delivering, uh, last rites in Latin. That's okay. what he was doing. And some went, that's when, uh, that's when Heyman, uh, started, or that's when Lesnar started cracking up. But, um, yeah, for me, when, when you can go out there and, and now knowing that SummerSlam is four hours, when you could, in my opinion, let me get your opinion. When you have, you could sit there and say the match that's bigger than WrestleMania there's only two people in wrestling history that will make me believe that. Bobby Heenan, Paul Heyman. Okay. Well, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that they're marketing this now as, do you think this match is bigger right now than any match we had at WrestleMania 31? Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel that way prior to this Monday? No. That's the power of Paul Heyman. That is the power in Paul we trust. In Heyman we trust. In Heyman... <laughs> In Pittsburgh, we have this thing in Shero we trust. Uh, not anymore. But, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was a, an old hockey thing. Uh, Justin, Justin, thank you, brother. Shout out to you, too. Uh, question for you. When do you think uh, WWE is going to turn Bray Wyatt face? Never. I don't think Bray, I've said this several times, I don't think Bray Wyatt is a heel or face kind of character. He's one of those that's completely in the gray. He's never going to be a heel. He's never going to be a face. Bray Wyatt is always going to be that gray character doing something weird and demented and psychopathy. I agree. I think he's in a situation, you know, like what we see with Cena. I yeah. think what we're seeing, you know, where he never really changed. And I know we got tired of it because he was super bubblegum. But because Bray Wyatt right now, they're booking him as such a strong heel. Let's face it. Anytime he goes in, his fireflies are out. Yeah. Uh, you know, all no you see what. is the lights up. You know, and I know it's a cool thing to do and everybody gets into it, but... Bray Wyatt is a character. I don't know if you, I I don't know if I would even want him face. Mm -hmm. I think that the sadistic side of Bray is what really sells. Yeah. Um. And even though he could be a almost a voice of the voices, a voice for the rejected generation, so to speak. That's a better way. A, a voice for the a voice for the rejects. You know, a voice mm -hmm. for the outcasts. A voice for people like me that didn't really know in high school what where the hell you. Fit because you're being told one thing, but you're wearing a Marilyn Manson T-shirt. People are trying to tell you another thing, you know. So just the outcast, so the people that just don't fit in, you know. I could see them booking him as a face that way, but I think he's so brilliant in in this heel manner, and and there's just still that creepy, sadistic, just enchanting vibe to him that it's it's there's a creepy charm to him, like a Dexter Morgan or um, the, the villain from Cape Fear. I, I mean, I hate to use that reference, but. 
Well, that's basically who he bases his speech pattern off of. So I Agreed. think that's an accurate statement to use. Um, Agreed. Yeah, I just I don't think that they'll ever have to turn him anything. Yeah, I agree. With so that. and uh, and we were having some satellite issues during the main event and digestive ceremony. Thank you for this one. The main event and this is what I did feel like too, or at least what I felt what we were going to get out of it. The main event felt very house showy. The undercard was for the older smart crowd with the actual wrestling, and the main event was just to send the women and children home happy. Absolutely. Hey, and I take offense to that. Well, huh. you're not a typical woman, though. You're let, let's let's Jesus. let's just call it like it is. Do you really consider Don't yourself move all women together? Well, would you consider and yourself a typical the woman? Pretty boys were in the last match. Um, I will say this though, and 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 that's a great point. I think that this is what we see. Here on out until SummerSlam because you don't want to make anybody look weak. You don't mm-hmm. want to make anybody look overly strong. House show booking to wrap up a show or end with a promo. Smart booking to your second biggest event of the year. What do you think? Yeah, I'll agree to that. Uh, Can't really say anything against it. Let me see. And then Brandon and Kareem both got my ba- or both uh, picked me up. And actually, somebody, somebody else did too. Uh, who was it? I know it was okay. So it was uh, Kareem and Brandon. Uh, Brandon, thank you again, brother. Uh, Kareem, thank you. Uh, it, and it was Jimmy Snuka that, at the WrestleMania okay. 25 match. And another interesting story, guys. Well, I kind of like how to brain freeze on that one. Uh, one, do, you know, when we do it, you know, I, I still get a little nerve sometimes, guys. You know, trying to entertain you guys. You know, it's um, it's more about you than it is me. Um, but the interesting personal story that we always like to tie in. Um, that was there were so many things that WrestleMania meant to me. Uh, WrestleMania 25, and now in hindsight, I, I can you know, and I. I Checked a lot today to see, but I, I do think that was Piper's last uh, WWE performance. Um, and it was Piper, it was Snuka, and it was Steamboat uh, with, you know, Flair on the outside, Mickey Rourke. Uh, it was the only, you know, it was the only WrestleMania I got a CM Punk win and a Jericho win uh, in the same, you know, that I was at in the same night. And I found out I was going to be a father that night. So that to me, it, I there's the weird WrestleMania moments for me. I get married at one. I, yeah, I find out I'm going to be a dad at one. And so, um, yeah, 25. There was certain elements of 25 that kind of got lost in a haze of as I'm leaving uh, Reliant Stadium. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, in a good way, though, guys. In a good way. So. Um, but yeah, but that was the that was the three on one. It was the 25th anniversary. Uh, that was the three on one match. It was. Uh, Piper. It was basically where Jericho would, when he, even he was on Larry King, just being beautifully keeping everything in kayfabe. Mm-hmm. Larry King in on it. Mickey Rourke was there. Guys, if you missed out on that, please go back. I know the match. You know, a lot of people weren't really happy with the match and the way it was set up. That's where Hollywood agents got in the way and did a whole bunch of different stuff. Wyatt family sticker. My daughter gave me in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> um, so I, I, it was one of those that the build up for it though was really entertaining, and I think that. Um, now knowing that it was pa- uh, Piper's last WWE match, unless you know, I I looked and I couldn't find any others. Um, ah man, mm, yeah, that's kind of it. It, it that's it hits. It yeah. hits. Um, let me see. Um, Mansoor Jugger, uh, Geek Prime X. I dig it. Uh, Sam, that's my boo, looking gorgeous in her AJ shit, mama. Always, always been gorgeous. That's why I know I'm expendable. One, we're gonna do an episode where I'm just gonna be a cardboard cutout, guys. One, we're we're gonna get a, a little bit ridiculous with this. We're gonna make uh, put such a satirical spin on a lot of things, and just really hope you guys are having as much fun with wrestling as yeah, we are. Yeah, because no one needs you. It's Nobody all about needs me. me. No, I'm expendable. It's all about. It me. is completely about you. Yeah, I'm, I, I could be gone tomorrow. Uh, William Burr, or may I say, Bill Burr. Uh, if you're one of my favorite comedians, hell yeah. If you just happen to be named like one of my favorite comedians. Hell yeah, um, Bill Burr. Uh, who knows? Maybe Amel has been doing some in-ring training. Speaking of uh, Stephen Amel, it's yes. a really good point. And here's the thing: we don't know how much, how many of his own stunts he really does. Mm-hmm. He theoretically he could looks work. Like he can do a lot of his own stunts on that Arrow show. You know, Just saying. he theoretically could work. And then uh, Rowdy Ruff Ray. This is a great question, Rowdy Ruff Ray. Uh, do you guys think the NXT title should introduce, or do you guys think NXT should introduce a minor mid card title? I think it would help guys like Breeze, Tommy, Corbin, etc. Yeah, I like that idea. Absolutely. I just think that they'd have to lengthen NXT to two hours. You or know, like an hour so. and a half. I don't think so. And here's why I really dig that idea is I think that they could make it almost like it's a television title. Uh, where you got, you know, it doesn't have to be defended every week, maybe every other week, maybe, but that's the title that isn't necessarily defended at TakeOver. Okay. But that's the title that you always see defended on NXT on you know on the tape show. Um, it can still be defended, you know, yeah. but 
I absolutely. We, we I think, that's I think that would definitely help a lot of guys that are in that limbo stage in NXT that have never held the title but have been there so long. Like, I agree. Like uh, he said, Tyler Breeze. Uh, yeah, yeah Tommy. You know, um, and, and it would do wonders for those guys. And I think that that's something we've talked about this mm-hmm. for months. And so that's a great point to bring up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, guys, this is the first the, review or review. This is the first one. I hey. hope you enjoyed it. Sam, what do you have to say? Anything before we wrap up our first episode? I would just like to thank everyone that actually commented on the videos and asked us questions and wanted to interact and hope that everyone does it even more next week. Guys, please. Us. And the, and listen, the funnier, when you guys get us to crack up, and listen, and we're, we have thick skin, guys. We're comedy people. So please berate us, too. We're not just looking for praise here. Berate us. Trust me. If you're going to get a laugh out of me, you're going to get mentioned on a show. I, try, I, I promise you that. Um, guys, don't forget WrestlingRumors.net for all your wrestling needs. Please like us on Facebook. Um, check out everything we're doing on Facebook. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at WrestleRumors. Please subscribe down here somewhere, wherever your browser is, <laughs> to our little channel. Uh, and guys, real quick before I want to get off, I not in that way by any means, I'd like to say. Um, tonight, or, or by the time you guys, this is uploaded to YouTube, um, is the last airing of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. And uh, I just wanted to say real quick that there's a lot of people that, uh, that I could say inspired me to want to do things uh, in media. And Jon Stewart is on a very, very short list. And, um, you know, whether you love him or hate him, uh, Jon Stewart has been a steady within media and comedy, and he's found a way for, to make people laugh. And I have I do my best to emulate him as much as possible on here, guys. That's why I, I try to play, you know, the straight comic as much, let Sam go wild. Um, and with tonight being his last episode, I just wanted to, you know, say thank you, Jon Stewart. Um, you know, I would, I can honestly say I would not be sitting here if it wasn't for, you know, a guy like Jon Stewart. Um, you know, I could rattle off a, a couple names, but... Um, I'll say people that I've never met before, people that I've inspired, that have inspired me to want to not only entertain but but have fun and help uh, educate or just laugh, or just get through times with people. John Stewart is a guy that um, I would not be here uh, without John Stewart. So, sir, thank you very much. I wish we had a way to give you a moment of zen, but obviously with production we cannot do that. So, John Stewart, thank you, my friend. Um, Sixteen years, we greatly appreciate you, Sam. Any last words? John Voyage. John Voyage, guys, guys, thank you. Everything WrestlingRumors.net. See you on Monday for Raw review. Don't we'll have the pre-show uh, wrestling warm up beforehand, and Sunday we won't be around for the anniversary of Chris Jericho's debut in WWE, August 9th, nineteen ninety nine, baby. Six, Sixteen years. It uh, wasn't in Winston Salem, no. but that was in WCW. I just like to we're say getting, Winston Salem drink. when we talk about Jericho. Winston, Winston Salem. No, it was in Chicago. But guys, thank you so much again. Uh, thank you for watching. Sub- subscribe, all that stuff. See ya. Peace.